How's it going, super friends, and welcome back to my channel and to a rare double upload. I don't usually upload two videos in a day. I know that can be really strenuous on people that watch your channel and support you, but it's one of those days where I kind of felt like it was a necessity. And besides, I haven't done an actual DC Talking Points episode in a while, so there's gonna be a few of the things I talk about after the main topic, but the first topic is one that was brought to me by a friend on YouTube called Civilian Collectibles, whom I mentioned last time. If you haven't gone and checked out his channel, please, do so, migrate over there after this video. The link will be in the description. He reviews all kinds of stuff, Power Rangers, DC, Marvel, Mortal Kombat. He's very quick, concise, and to the point. So if you like a fast reviewer, not somebody who talks for a long time like myself, then you might like the flavor of action figure review that you find on his channel. It'll be linked down in the description below, so please go show the man some love for him showing me some love. The first piece of news comes to us from an IGN article that Civilian shared with me that goes into a little bit more detail between Todd McFarlane, see how I called him Todd McFarlane and not McFarlane? Hey, listen, as a side note, I grew up calling him Todd McFarlane and so did everybody in my neighborhood that read Spawn comics. This is like way, way, way back when. I didn't know the proper pronunciation. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato, right? But now I've seen the error of my ways and I'm really gonna try to make sure that I call him Todd McFarlane by the correct pronunciation from now on. McFarlane, McFarlane, McFarlane. But yeah, there's definitely more to the story. I'm just gonna read a piece of the article here to you. That way I'm not paraphrasing and you can actually see it for yourself. We were able to chat with McFarlane on the phone this week to learn more about this announcement and what it means for the future of DC Collectibles lineup. McFarlane made it clear that this new arrangement isn't meant to be an exclusive one. McFarlane Toys won't be responsible for handling all the DC branded toys and figures on the market, but will focus specifically on the collector oriented toy lines and a more adult audience. Spin Master Core will take over the more mass market focused toy lines in 2020, while Mattel will presumably continue the very successful DC Superhero Girls line. According to McFarlane, this represents a shift in philosophy for DC. Rather than granting a master toy license to one company, they're dividing it amongst several specialized companies. If you're going to go into the geek stuff, We've been swimming in those waters a long time, he said. And obviously, they decided to move in a different direction with Mattel. I think maybe Mattel was servicing all of it prior, and they decided they'd break it up among a couple vendors instead of giving it all to one person. Why don't we play to everybody's strengths and do cool stuff at a little bit higher price. McFarlane told us that he was motivated largely by a desire to try his hand at DC characters. I'm the only guy who doesn't do Marvel, DC, and Star Wars. Everyone else on the planet has done it except for me because they keep carving these licenses up. I know that hamster sweaters with Star Wars logos is a thing. I've gotta figure out my niche. We finally get a crack at that now. The article then goes on to say, while it's too early to discuss specific figures or toy lines, McFarlane says that we won't be seeing any prototypes until at least Comic-Con this summer. McFarlane toys will be targeting the same audience that has been buying Mattel's DC Universe classics and DC Multiverse figures for the past decade. These toys will feature a mix of traditional comic book designs as well as those inspired by DC's movies, animated series, and video games. The technical category is DC Multiverse Collector Figures, said McFarlane. You're going out and doing a little more sophistication with the toy at a higher price point, and maybe the packaging is a little more sophisticated, a little more in terms of props. It's not an obvious buy for a five-year-old. There's plenty of those. It's for the people who are a little bit older like yourself or myself who say, hey, I don't mind spending an extra five bucks or 10 bucks if we get the extra value out of it and it looks cool. That's where I step in. And the last thing I want to mention is that the article also says, in addition to stepping in for Mattel, McFarlane Toys will also focus on the market previously covered by DC Collectibles, which was recently folded into Warner Brothers' consumer products division as part of a larger corporate restructuring. That means fans can expect high-end collectibles like statues and busts from McFarlane along with traditional action figures. McFarlane told us, with DC Collectibles taking a step back, there'll be a void there and they want me to sort of step up and take that momentum on myself. Given how long Mattel has been putting out adult-oriented toy lines like DC Multiverse, it's probably safe to say some collectors are feeling trepidation at these recent changes at DC. 
McFarland wanted to reassure these collectors that they'll have plenty to look forward to in the years ahead. So there you have it, a huge deal of the stuff that you and I were likely wondering about as far as DC action figures goes and the future thereof has been answered in this IGN article with an actual interview with Todd McFarlane. I don't know about you, but for me, it does excite me that he's excited about working on the DC characters. He's admitting that they're going to be a higher price point in comparison to the regularly priced action figures. I still don't think it'll be that much different than Marvel Legends or Multiverse. It'll be comparable in that price point. And the interview also touches on something that a lot of people have been wondering about is, what is the future of DC collectibles with their action figures and statues? People have been saying now for months that DC collectibles is gonna step back from action figures, but I never heard any actual insiders saying, yes, this is what's going to happen. This is the closest, at least that I've heard from someone on the inside saying, yeah, DC Collectibles is going to be stepping back. Now, what does that mean for the future of the DC Essentials? Honestly, I don't know. I I'm assuming that the ones that we've already seen you know, that haven't been released, the Green Lantern, the Wonder Woman, the Cheetah, the Cyborg Superman, the Supergirl, all those figures, I'm assuming that they're still going to be released but will we see any more released after that? I don't know. We're going to have to wait until Toy Fair or San Diego Comic-Con to see if there are any reveals. There might not be. This is a completely new age for us DC action figure collectors. Hopefully McFarlane, as they're creating and tooling and sculpting these figures, will address some of the things that a lot of collectors have been talking about for a long time as far as DC figures goes, like articulation and sculpted detail, and I do have a very good feeling that these figures are going to be absolutely epic because they're coming from a fan to us, the fans. So, fingers crossed, this is gonna be good news. The next thing I want to talk about is that the Shazam and Dr. Savannah Multiverse figures have started hitting retail. I'm going to go on the hunt tonight to my local Walmart and see if I can find him because although we don't usually get a whole slew of the Multiverse figures, we didn't get the Wonder Woman, we didn't see head nor tails of either of the last two regular Multiverse waves, nor do we see the Aquaman figures. However, I'm talking to the guys at Walmart, there's actually a barcode place and a slot for the Shazam figures and they were supposed to be on the truck yesterday and they weren't, but so hopefully they'll be there today and then I can get there before the scalpers. If you're a scalper and you're watching this, stay away from my Shazam figures or I'll Shazam my foot up your ass. Sorry, things got a little bit real there for a second. <laughs> Back to your regularly scheduled positive guy. I just really don't like scalpers. So yeah, when you're out and about doing your toy hunt, keep your eyes open for the Shazam and Dr. Savannah. They should be hitting soon, as well as that Bizarro. It should be hitting your Walgreens anytime now because people are reporting seeing it. But all three of those figures should be hitting shelves. Hmm, what else can we talk about? Oh yes, Melissa Benoist got engaged to the love of her life. It's so cool to see Supergirl and mon -El getting married. This is a match made in heaven. I mean, the DC Universe. I mean, the CW. No, 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 reality. Sorry, they're getting married for real. Anyhow, congratulations, and I hope the future is bright for the pair of you, and I can't wait to see what wonderful things life is going to bring to both of you. Now, if you're currently invested in the comic series Doomsday Clock and Batman Damned, both of those titles are going to be delayed. I know, that sucks. As for the new set street release date for Batman Damned, issue number three, and the final issue at that, I don't have an answer for you because I couldn't find one. Maybe there's someone else who is better at this whole news thing that will actually have that for you, but I couldn't find an answer for that. It's just delayed. Maybe they're delaying it because Bermejo drew another bat wiener <laughs> and they're trying to get rid of it before it hits the street. Now, while the last issue of Doomsday Clock, issue number eight, hit specialty shops around the first week of December, the next issue isn't going to hit our comic book retailers until March the 6th. It's really delayed. That's a big space. Now, they'd already said, hey, th this is now going to be a bi-monthly series, but it's just dragging way out. And it makes me kind of sad, but also excited. Sad because I want them to come out, and it, I kind of feel like maybe they're losing a little bit of interest in the whole doomsday clock thing, but maybe I'm wrong. The hopeful side of me says, no, no, they're just trying to make sure that it is the very best work that they can put out. And if that means delaying it so that you have a better product, then that means delaying it. Either way, positive or negative, the facts are the facts, and that's when it's coming out. 
Okay, and just like that, I'm wearing a different hat, in case you didn't notice. That's because I actually recorded the last clip like an hour ago, and I have no more time to do any more of this video on account of the fact that my son, my youngest son, who's in kindergarten, threw up all over the carpet during story time, and I had to go and get him and bring him home on account of the fact that the teachers don't like it when you leave your kids at school after they vomit everywhere, so he's at home with me upstairs under a blanket planted in front of the PlayStation watching Netflix. I gotta go keep an eye on him until my wife gets home when I can then edit the video, so I have no more time. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching this one. It means a whole lot to me. Leave any comments you have down in the comment section below. Leave, <laughs> leave any comments you have down in the comment section below. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. You know what that red button's for. It says subscribe. You can click it if you'd like to. Ding the bell if you do, though, so that you get notified of new videos, and I will see you with the next one. Bye, everybody.